My student went from a golfer who could not find consistency in their game to then the senior state champion and then interstate champion after that because of this drill I gave him. Now this drill to me did three things that really improved him to this great success. One, it tightened up shot dispersion. Two, it really helped his compression. So his ball and turf contact was unbelievably good. And then three, it made him hit the ball way further. And as a golfer who is in his 70s, he was hitting the driver over 270 yards every single time without really putting any effort into it. it was the preset impact drill. So where we get into an impact position at setup and then we swing back and swing through from there and it really creates that great rotation, great compression and great distance as we could see with my student. So why we did that drill was ultimately because of how he was starting the downswing and then how that encouraged him to move through the golf ball. And this is something I see with amateur golfers all the time. And it's a little bit of a conceptual thing. A lot of golfers try to do this, but it's really, really making you struggle like I did with my student before he ended up going through that crazy winning spree. So what we saw with my student, as soon as he started the downswing, he would have this big hip bump. So his hips would really slide towards the target, which a lot of you are trying to do out there. So that big hip slide. And what that would do to his upper body, his upper body would then start to slightly tilt back away from the target. So when that happens, the upper body tilting back away, that can really affect your low point control. So when the upper body moves back, the lowest point of the swing arc is gonna to want to get behind or level with the golf ball. Because the lowest point of our swing arc is really where our left pec is. So if our left pec is slightly in front of the golf ball, where's that low point gonna be? It's gonna be slightly in front. But if we're doing a movement that's causing our spine to tilt away and that left pec is getting either level with the golf ball or behind, that lowest point of the swing arc is gonna get either level or behind that golf ball, thin, fat shots, all of what you could imagine depending on the severity you do it. So for my student there, he was already a fairly good golfer, just not that consistent, to where then he had to really fire his arms through the shot to be able to move his low point somewhat forward. But that's very inconsistent to do that movement, being tilted back it and then drive the arms through through that last little bit of the downswing. Imagine how fast is it going through impacts? Really, really quick. The chances of you trying to drive yourself forward through there isn't very likely. So that's one thing. It really helped with that slider movement and tilt back. So that's one area, low point. It really doesn't get you to strike or compress the golf ball well. But two, we did it to increase his rotation at the same time because that tilt back movement really hinders that rotation from happening. You can still turn whilst you're tilted back with the other body, but it really becomes difficult and it really slows down the rate of your rotation. It doesn't stay constant. It will gradually slow because it will really start to hurt your lower back if you really have this hip bump tilt back whilst you're trying to rotate very painful. So we want that rotation to be constant and that's why it really helped us to be able to gain a lot of distance as well is because that rotation became uninhibited when we got this correct. So this drill cleared up both of those there. So to understand that, let's dive right into how to do it. So what we did, we got into this rotated impact position to where we opened up the hips as much as we could. So really got ourselves rotated with our hips as much as possible. We rotated as much as we could with our chest, which would always be a little bit less than your hip rotation. We made sure the weight was 90% on that left side. That left leg was fairly straight and the right shoulder down towards the right hip. The gap between right shoulder and right hip become minimized there. So that was the position we were starting in. So this will create that spring back, spring through effect. So where, because he was springing back when he was getting into that downswing transition, it stopped him straight away from having that hip bump. So it really helped him get his pressure into his left side. So he was still shifting his weight left. He wasn't just excessively sliding the hips and losing pelvic tilt and then losing spine tilt. So when that lower body starts to really turn nicely from unwinding, the upper body then stayed on top of the lower body. So that really helped with low point control. Cause like we talked about with the left pec, now it's not behind the golf ball. Now we can continue to turn, continue to have a little shift. And now you can see, my left pec's in front of the golf ball. Be able to cover it, be able to compress it better. So it really helped massively with getting that low point control because it stops that bump going forward. It springs you and rotates you, unwinds you, spirals you. Really makes striking very, very consistent. So of course, 
What else does it help with? The rotational aspect, like we talked about, the rotation was really stunted from doing what he was doing. And then when we really got this, of course, this is one of the best, or if not the best rotation drill out there, because you're getting into this position, you're replicating at impact to our ideal position, and then you will just spring back, spring through, and then you're gonna get all these really nice benefits, like one, club face being really stable, because the better our rotation is going through the golf ball, the more square this club face is gonna to stay to the arc. Your club face position and control will be constant going through the golf ball. So then you're not having all this flash speed with the hands to time it up. Timing becomes very irrelevant when it comes to your shot control of your club face, because you're just mastering it by being nicely under control. And of course, you're gonna be continuing that rotation, really nice, really brisk through the golf ball. So your rotation is staying constant. So you're not dumping any speed last minute, which is why we saw my student here really increase his distance and you know, 270 yards for on average, he can hit the ball further than that, but on average for a golfer in his 70s is an unbelievable distance to hit. So here's the most important part and that's how to practice this. So this is how to do it in your practice, the progression of this drill, which is exactly what we did with my student, but also how to get this onto your golf course swing. So taking it out to the course, replicating this move. So, okay, practice. So when you're practicing, the most important thing to start off with is do it in a half swing first, so a half back swing. So, okay, like we said, that nice impact position and then a little half swing back, and through, really try to get that spring through the shot. If you can do this into a net, that would be even better. So that would be great because you'll be just focusing on this movement, springing back, swinging through. There we go. That would be awesome. And then really being patient with that part. This is, patience is so huge when it comes to practice. A lot of golfers try to push too far forward with their improvement. You've got to really stick on an area for quite a while. So once you've done a ton of reps doing it half swing, and I would really make sure that you're doing that part for about a week or two. So then start to build up to more of a fuller swing and see if you can still get that same movement going through the golf ball. So we're trying to look at and see how we're turning through the golf ball. Is that turn constant? Are we moving through there? Is that club face staying stable? Are the hands exiting more left around you post impact? All little keys we wanna look at here. And if we're not managing to do that, doing a more fuller swing doing this drill, then we need to go back again to doing half swings until we really rep it out and go get those movements into our swing even more. So fuller swings, then assess, brilliant. But there's one more little bit in practice and that is exaggeration and trying to replicate the feel as well as you can when you start doing some normal swings. So exaggeration, okay. We see top players in the world always exaggerate. The one to me that comes into my mind all the time is Alex Noren. Alex Noren really has this very exaggerated type of practice swing here where he is getting as crazy as he possibly can with his extreme feel when he's practice swing and then he'll try and replicate that same thing. So for example, Matthew Wolf is a big one who has that little trigger before he goes. So you can imagine if you did a load of kind of Alex Noren style, really rotational practice swings and then did a little Matthew Wolf trigger when you're doing some more normal swings, you could then get that into your swing way more efficiently. But you don't want to rush that portion of it. That will take quite a while for you to actually get there. So sprinkle a little bit of those in at the end of your practice sessions, absolutely, even in the half swing phase. And that'll be a great way to go. With my student, we really made sure we did a ton of practice swings to really get there. So if you, for example, were having sets of five balls, I'd want you to do three practice swings in between all of those balls. So really making sure you're getting in there, of course, repeating that set over and over again. So bringing it onto the golf course is probably the question I have all the time, no matter what we talk about here on YouTube, how do I bring this feel or drill onto the course? Or players saying, why can't I do it? I do it great in practice, but not on the course. So there's ultimately three things we can say for this. One, for this, play some rounds with it. You know, play some rounds of golf. If you can play some rounds doing this drill, you'll be surprised you could really play quite well doing this drill here. Because what that's gonna do, one, it's going to ensure that you're going to be getting those positions on the golf course, but two, it's going to be giving you repetitions of doing it. And we have a really quite funny thing when it comes to getting on the golf course, as you know, it becomes really difficult to be able to replicate what you're doing in practice 
So on the golf course, you might have a really easy time doing it in practice, but on the golf course, it seems almost impossible. That's because the environment of the golf course is absolutely different than a driving range, and we have one shot at a time. So one, this gives you, one, like we said, the repetition. Two, it gets you feeling and doing the movement in the golf course environment, so absolutely not where I am right now in my net but then it breaks down that barrier. So it will get you bridging the gap between practice and play a lot quicker. So play nine holes, play 18 holes every now and again, doing it, and you're gonna have some great results from it. So there is one other area, let's say for someone who might, might not wanna do that, I would encourage you to do it, but you should do this part anyway, and that is having the trigger move. So like we see with Matthew Wolf, what does he do before he takes that club back on the golf course? Does that and then does a Matthew Wolf swing. So that's really, really important because it's really gonna get you feeling that move just before you take the club back. So having that movement primes you to do the movement and then just respond, boom, there we go. So it's gonna be extremely beneficial for you just to get that feel, absorb it into your swing a little bit and then go and play. But the most important thing guys is the practice portion. A lot of times, for the third point here, why players haven't got something into their swing on the golf course yet, because they haven't practiced it enough. So subconscious is what we're trying to take advantage of here, or we're trying to get the movement into. We're trying to get into that packed part of the brain so we don't have to think, so we can just swing and we do what we want to do. It takes an incredible amount of time. Like my student here, he didn't just go from struggling golfer to senior state champion and interstate champion like that after doing the drill for a couple of weeks. No, we were working for a good six, seven, eight months or so before he started seeing those big results and started winning all these tournaments. So it's really, really important to get the enough reps in. I tell you what, my student, he was a big practicer. So before we end the video, some of you may be curious, what type of lessons did we do? We did all online lessons. As my student here, he is an unlimited lesson subscriber on my Skillist. So Skillist is the online coaching. So he had unlimited access and had as many lessons as he wanted. And we would have two to three lessons a week when we're in that real prime period. Not all full lessons. A lot of them were just check-in style lessons to see how he was doing. Just like any other individual sport, the coach is there all the time checking in and seeing how practice is going. That is the best way to be able to improve your golf game. One lesson a month, two lessons a month, let's say most people do that in person with their local pro, that is not enough to be able to make a considerable gain in your golf game. As we could see with my student here from the massive gains he made, this is the best way to go and learn. So if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, just like my student here, plenty of options to be able to do so. Unlimited lessons is just one of them. There's a link in the description. I'll be more than happy to work with you. So if you enjoyed this video, click that like button if you want more golf instruction, just like this, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video.